Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. And today we are talking about the granddaddy of brawling. One of my personal favorite ships in the game and my... I think it's actually my second most played ship now. Used to be my first. The Grosser Kurfürst, the Tier 10 special German battleship. Used to be the Tier 10 Tech Line German battleship, but Wargaming deemed that... GK did not fit the line, and subsequently removed her from the tech tree, put her in the armory as a special ship, or a freemium ship, and replaced her with the Preussen, which is, in my opinion, which I've given in the Preussen review in several subsequent videos, better for the meta than the GK. But as the title of this question, the title of this question, the, the title of this video questions, is GK even worth obtaining anymore in today's world of warships? And that's what we're going to answer today. We're going to look at the GK, look at her stats and features, talk a little bit about her history in the game, and talk about how she's played in the game and whether or not I think she's worth picking up at all today in today's world of warships. Like I said, she is a coal ship now. You can't obtain this ship completely for free. Uh, if you are wondering how long it takes to get a tier 10 coal ship, well, it depends upon what you do in the game. If you just get your three daily bundles and always select the uh, more resources option, which will give you normally at least one bag of coal, take about three months doing that every day to get a tier 10 coal ship. If you do a little bit more like partake in the events, ranked, clan battles, um, just any special pop-up event that pops up, like uh, the dockyard event for the Puerto Rico that's happening late this summer, you can normally cut that down to about a month, a month and a half, if you partake in everything that is. But, do you want to spend that hard-earned coal on the GK, or something like the Napoli, or any of the other wonderful coal ships in the game? I'll tell you out the gate here, this is definitely not the first coal ship you're going to want to grab once you get enough coal. But do you want to spend any, any coal on it at all? Well, let's take a look at the GK and talk about that right now. So talking about her armor, her armor is actually very nice for what the ship is designed to do. And that is Brawl. She has a 60 millimeter, not quite wraparound bow, but as you can see, there's a very slim, almost clone trooper-esque T in the bow of the GK, where if a... Yami, Shikishima, Satsuma, whatever ship with 18.1 inch or larger guns wants to pin your bow, they have to somehow sneak it in there. It's not impossible, but it's very hard to do because RNG is RNG. So from that 60 millimeter plate, we have a cheek plate of 120 millimeters. Then her main belt's 380. You have a little slot above that that's 280 millimeters. And then above that, that's 150 millimeter plate. And by the way, if you're wondering, you want to shoot the GK if you have her broadside somewhere around here in the upper half of her belt. It's quite chunky there. The stern is 32. There's no wraparound stern, although she does have some plates. 120, 120 millimeter plate right there at the stern. That does cover her steering gears. Her deck... The very tip of the stern and bow deck is 32. Then it beefs up to 50 millimeters with that mid deck, as well with the main deck armor. You strip away all that external armor, and she does have a turtle back armor scheme, of course. The citadel is slightly above the waterline, but you're never going to get to it shooting through the main belt armor. Uh, there are some very odd angles that you can pin the GK at. Uh, from the stern, from the bow, there's a couple of ways when the ship's angled in a certain manner that you can sneak some shells in there through those stern and bow plates, those 120mm plates. Sometimes the shells bite and go right through the ship's armor scheme into the Citadel. It doesn't happen too, too often. Besides that, the only real chance of citadeling the GK is that range, extreme range, with plunging fire. Okay, so going on to her survivability now. She does have 105,800 hit points with a massive 25% torpedo damage reduction. That's a joke. Uh, there are cruisers in the game now with much better damage reduction than the GK. Despite having an absolutely massive slab of torpedo protection on the side, uh, it, it's, yeah, it, it don't do that much. 
despite the description of the ship actually saying she has impressive and powerful torpedo protection. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. So for her guns, she has two options for guns. You can choose the 406mm guns or the 420s. I run the 420s for a couple of reasons. reasons. One, funny number. Two, the 420s have a maximum AP damage of 13,500. The 406s have a maximum damage of 12,700. That's an 800 point difference. You might say, Sealer, that doesn't sound like that much of a difference. And sure, sure, per shell, it's not. But when you add all those shells up, in a single salvo, you're doing around 9,600 more damage per salvo with the 420mm guns than you are with the 406s. And when you're brawling in a close-in fight with another battleship, you want that knockout power. Now, sure, you could fit the 406s, get the faster reloads. The 406s reload in, let me fit them real quick here. I believe it's like 30 seconds flat or 29 seconds. So sure, sure. You could, you could go with the 406s and take the 29 second reload time. That's probably better for playing this like a more standard battleship. But for, again, close and brawling, you want that knockout power. And that's why I run the 420s. That does give you a 32 second reload time, however. But with the way that this ship eats damage from long range, if you're running Adrenaline Rush, you have these 420s reloading quite fast, quite quickly. Alright, so in addition to that... Um, for the, and again, from here on out, it's about the 420s. For the 406s, just remove a couple hundred points of damage from both the HE and the AP, like I said. So the reload time for the 420s is 32 seconds, 180 time with the build that I have on it. I'll throw Luchins and Luchins back up here for y'all. Uh, the 180 time is 32 seconds, maximum dispersion is 266 meters, and she has a maximum range of 20.6 kilometers. HE match from the shell damage is 5,000. You have a 41% chance of causing a fire per shell. And the HE does pin 105 millimeters of armor. HE comes up the tubes at 800 meters a second. AP, 13,500 is the maximum damage. And those also come up the tubes at 800 meters a second. And her secondaries, Kerr first is blessed to have 20 of the glorious 128 millimeter German secondary guns. What this means is that every single secondary on this ship can pin 32 millimeters of armor which is the last major threshold at high tier, so you don't need IFHG on the ship at all. It will rip through what you need to rip through. And again, with the build that I have on it, these secondaries have a reload time of 2.7 seconds, maximum range of 12.5 kilometers, maximum HG shell damage of 1,500, and a 5% chance to causing a fire on the target, and again, 32 millimeters of armor pin, and they come out the tubes at 900 meters a second. She also is equipped with 8 of the 150mm guns, which reload in 5.1 seconds, have a maximum range of 12.5 kilometers, do 1700 maximum HE damage, 8% chance of causing a fire on the target, these can pin 38mm of armor, and these come out the tubes at 875m a second. So you have quite the impressive secondary suite here. Again, no HE is needed, all these can pin 32mm out the box, which is absolutely fantastic for dealing with high tier ships. AA, she has an A rating of 82. Now, back in the day, GK actually wasn't that bad of an AA boat, but since the CV rework, of course, that's all gone out the window. She has 40 of these quad mounted 20 millimeter guns. Then she has eight of these dual mounted 55s, and then the 20 128s also count as AA. Uh, back in the day, she had good AA, but her AA was focused in a very few mounts. But again, today, that's whoop, out the window now. Maneuverability, she actually has a pretty quick boat. She can get up to 31.5 kil kilometers uh, knots with the speed flag equipped. She turns in 1,050 meters. Rudder shift time at 19.4 seconds. Quite a long rudder shift time there. Concealment, she's not very sneaky. She's got a concealment rating of 15.9, and that is with the uh, module and not with the commander skill. I chose to go for fire prevention rather than concealment because even if you take concealment, it gets it down to like 14 and change, which is okay. But for today's meta, I think the fire prevention is much more worth it, especially since CVs and uh, submarines are a thing now, and you're almost always spotted at higher tier. So when you're building a ship for brawling, I go with fire prevention over the concealment. All right. Now, I go over to her consumable. She gets a choice of hydroacoustic search. Well, actually, not a choice there. She gets hydroacoustic search. 
which is a standard German 6 kilometer hydro. She doesn't get a choice between fighter or spotter. I choose fighter with the dispersion that GK has. Good luck hitting the thing with the spotter's range. She gets repair party. This regen 634 hit points per second, reloads in 30 point, I'm sorry, adds active for 30.8 seconds, reloads at 76 seconds, so you get 5 charges of that with the battle, Battleship Superintendent skill, and she gets Damage Con, which is active for 16.5 seconds and reloads at 76 seconds. So actually, pretty decent Damage Con there, 16.5 seconds is a longer reload time for most of the high tier battleships that aren't American. And during those 16.5 seconds, no fires or floodings will be started on your GK. So, take all of that, compress it into one massive ship that used to be the largest ship in the game until the likes of the Hanover showed up. And what do you get? Well, you get a ship that's absolutely great for brawling. But the hard cold truth is that you don't really get to do that that much anymore. Now, the match you're watching in the background is... I used to say would be the stereotypical way you would have to play German battleships, like when I made my German battleship video uh, about a... Um, when did I make that guy? About a year or two ago. This is how you typically play German battleships back in the day, like that. But with today's super passive teams, you barely get past the first half of this video, uh, well, of this match that you're watching in the background. If you notice, for about the first half of the match, I'm just sitting back, taking pot shots, hoping something connects, being ex ex extremely passive, much more passive than I would be in GK in previous years. And then once things start to move, you flip around and you push in, you get your secondaries into battle, you go after the ship that's alone and maybe only has one or two other ships with it, find those ships that are alone, focus on them, get them down, then you turn your attention to whatever's left of the enemy team, which in, in this match, this, this is actually a, a fantastic match, I, I love this match, this is uh, a match that went on for quite some time, there wasn't a clear steamroll one way or the other, you know, in the first half it looked like we were winning because we were picking up the kills, but the second half, well, that team from the enemy team of the south managed to get their stuff together, they got the two caps, they started to push up north, and, well, they wiped out most of our team, and it came down to just three or four ships on either side at the end. It's a good, it's a pretty darn good match. And this is, if you haven't caught on, a very rare match for today's World of Warships. Normally, one side just would have absolutely rocked the other side out of existence in the first 10 minutes. Which is a world that GK is not very well suited for. She's not really that great at range, as you can see. She has have 12 guns, and do keep in mind, th this is a ship I I've played thousands of battles in, okay? So I have a general pretty good feeling of how the GK's guns are going to perform. It's not a ship that you can say, okay, I want the shells to go right there. It's more of a ship of, okay, the shells are going to generally go on this area, so if I lead the ship right around here, I might get a couple of shell hits in. And that that's how GK's guns perform at range. Now, of course, once you get closer in, you don't have to worry about that because when you're brawling at close range, the shells are, the dispersion's decent enough to where they're going to go at least toward the ship and, and hit it. Might not be in the correct spot, but with 12 shells, what you need to bite is going to bite into the enemy's ship, especially with the knockout power that the GK has. Uh, again, with you know, 12 guns is, is no slouch at tier 10, even though they're 16-inch guns, either with the 4.6s or the 4.20s, you don't want to get slapped with with these uh these shells from close range and plus once you add in the secondaries 12.5 kilometer secondaries they are quite quite fearsome it's a quite fearsome ship if you can get with within secondary range and when the ship is within secondary range that's when she's at her best now of course with the changes to the commander skill the secondaries don't get the instant boost to accuracy like they used to it does take some time to build up but in this situation like you see when i push into this yammy it's plenty enough to do what she's able to do especially after battleships after about the first 15 seconds most of your shells are connecting once you get the full 45 second thing dialed up they're all connecting and yes against DDs and such it's not as good because most DDs aren't going to sit within your secondary range for 45 seconds or if they're that close to you you're probably getting torpor rushed and either you're going to die or they're going to die one way or another so the secondaries have taken a bit of a hit in terms of their usability against DDs, but against cruisers and battleships, they're still plenty effective enough. Again, especially since these can pin 32 millimeters of armor. Now, it really helps GK out if you do have Luchins like I do, and uh, GK getting moved to a premium ship 
made me pretty happy because now I can move Lucians from him to Turpitz to Odin to um, the Palmer and all without having to retrain Lucians into the uh, the um, Sharnhorst as well. So that's a pretty good pickup from GK being moved to a premium ship. But if you're not in a match like this, or if you're not finding yourself being exceptionally blessed and having a match like this, just you know, match after match after match like this, you probably don't want to pick up GK. Probably not until you're almost out of coal ships. Like, I would personally recommend you pick up GK sometime before or after you get Duke of York. Either right before or right after. And Duke of York is, of course, a tier 7 coal ship. So, I would literally recommend every single other coal ship before GK. It very much hurts me to say that. Because this is a ship that I love. But the meta is not very kind to this ship. Now, it's also good for the modes like Convoy and Dirigible Derby when those come out. If you want a ship that will do fantastically well in that, sure, the GK is very much a ship for that. It's great at close range, it's great when it can brawl, but it's just not well suited for the meta in every way that the game is like in random battles. And even in competitive, like in ranked and tier 10 ranked, I would still probably recommend Proison over the GK. Because again, the meta is just so far gone from what the GK is that it's not very usable. It's frustrating. It can work. Don't get me wrong. You can build it for the main battery guns. But this is a ship that's designed to brawl. It's the better brawler between the Proisin and herself. So I wouldn't really recommend you guys pick this up until, again, you get down to, like, you have maybe five ships left. And you really like the Germans at that point. And sure, if you have Luchens and you want a super brawler, go for it. Just know that you're not going to get very many matches where the ship can actually do what it was designed to do. And again, doesn't bring me any joy in saying that. This is one of my most played ships. My second most played ship behind the Yamato. A ship that I've played and that I've loved for years. But it is what it is and it's unfortunate that it is. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Went away to 40,000 subs and I can't thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Saturday. Have a wonderful, actually, a wonderful Friday because today is Friday when you're going to be watching this. <laughs> you have a wonderful Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful 4th of July weekend for all my Americans out there. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.